Welcome, 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 everyone. We are back in effect. Another another episode of Shoot the Fire podcast with myself, host Xavier Porter, co-host Pat DeMoss in the cut. Another day, another dollar. That's doing? right, that's right. Hey, man, we hanging in there. So this week, we're going to discuss one of the toughest matches I've seen at the Barclays Center, the Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, WBC welterweight championship fight, the outcome of the fight, what's going to take place after within the welterweight division, and as well as this weekend, the mega rematch fight with Canelo Alvarez, Saul Canelo Alvarez against Gennady Golovkin, Triple G. We've got a special guest on the line today, Pat Casey, fighting out of Massachusetts, Team Link MMA, next fight, October 12th on the undercard of the Matt Mitrione and Ryan Bader heavyweight, well, you know, heavyweight championship eliminator fight up on Bellator. This weekend, UFC Fight Night 136, headlined by Mark Hunt and Alexia Olenek, takes place at the Olympic Stadium. And also, the PFL event um, playoffs have been announced October 5th takes place in New Orleans, Louisiana. October 13th, Long Beach, California is PFL 9. And PFL 10 is October 20th in Washington, D.C. All right. So, Pat, how you been, man? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. I've been good. And, you know, training, you know, nothing new, just training like usual. I'm feeling good. A lot of guys preparing for fights, like I said, on our team. So, you know, good training, a lot of good energy in the gym. And I'm, you know, feeling good, ready I need to get back into the cage soon. Now, for those that may not that may not know you or be aware of your career, let everybody know where you're fighting from and things like that. I'm Pat Casey. I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts. I'm fighting at Team Link in Ludlow, Mass. This is uh, my fourth pro fight. After this one, I'll be 4-0. This is my second Bellator fight. So, you know, that's about it right now. Just keep fighting, keep moving along, and... Hopefully more and more people will know who I am soon. Now, how long have you been fighting for? I've been fighting for about three years. I turned pro last February, but I did a couple couple years on the amateur circuit, had about nine amateur fights. So I've only, I'm still pretty new to the game. I've only really been training in mixed martial arts for about three and a half years, like okay. consistently. So still, I'm still fairly new. Okay. Um, I was actually at your, um, I believe it was your first fight with MMA. I mean, not MMA, Bellator, excuse me. Bellator, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you, did, you did very well. You won the fight, <laughs> you know. Did, yeah. yeah, you know. And um, and um, I know you went in there to, to put on a, a great performance. You came out with the victory. You had tons of fans, and you know, in attendance and support. What did you think about your first fight, and how have you grown from there? Well, it was definitely, it was, it was a great experience to have your pro debut for Bellator is huge, you know, to be, you know, in a big lights, a big stage right off the bat. It was, it was an awesome experience. Like you said, I brought a lot of, a lot of people. There was a lot of support. Um, the fight itself went well. You know, I'm always looking for ways I could have performed better, but, you know, I won every round and that's the most important thing, but I've definitely improved from there. Um, I feel like I improve every fight, every fight I, I take so much out of, out of my performance, you know, I'm very hard on myself. A lot of times I harp on the negatives and the bad stuff I did. So and I've just been working consistently from there, from that fight, like I do after every fight. And every fight I feel like I add more to my game. I get more and more comfortable. And, you know, the the, the package you'll get in October will be the best that you've seen thus far. Uh, I believe my uh, co-host, um, Pat, has some questions. It's funny, we got Pat and Pat on the line today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. K, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious. So you've been doing martial arts, um, you said, for about three and a half years now. How old are you, by the way? Say that again. How old am I? Yes. Uh, I'm 27 years old. 27, okay. And um, do you have any kind of athletic background that kind of brought you into training? I was, a, I was a football player most of my life. That's why I kind of oh. got a late start. I was a football player my whole life. I played a little in college. And I didn't get into, you know, I didn't have no, I didn't have a wrestling background. I did the little, little boxing. Period. So I, when I got into it, I was pretty much learning everything, you know, at, at one time. Obviously, I had, you know, natural ability, which let me, you know, 
move along a little quicker. But you know, I definitely, I definitely started from you know point zero. You know, with no no real background in any flight sports. Where'd you at? Where'd you play college football? At? I played at American International College for a little bit, which is um, in Springfield, Mass. It's a Division two school. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, I know uh, Owen St. Prout of the UFC. He also came, you know, from the University of Tennessee, um, yeah. and also had a successful career in MMA. Yeah, uh, a lot of what? a lot of football. I mean, being a being a football player, you're usually a strong, explosive athlete. So that that helps and translates at least a little in any sport. So you see a lot of guys come from football into MMA. My my wanted to ask in regards to. Bellator, are you like are you like signed to them, or is this like a or you have like a fight deal, or how do, how does this work? Right, right now, I'm I'm not signed. I'm just the last the fights I've done for them were just one fight deals. Because right now I'm I'm trying to fight as often as I can. So I I fight. I've been fighting kind of like every other month, for, you know, for most of my pro career. So now I'm just doing one fight at a time. It's possible that I could sign a long term deal. With Bellator, we'll have to see, you know, what happens after this fight. But as of now, it's just a, another one fight deal. Okay, so the goal is to get signed with, um, if well, the goal would be, I'm, I'm asking, would be to sign with Bellator or just or any other um, brand I that's mean, out there. The, the the goal ultimately is to sign with the UFC. That's usually everyone's goal. I mean, Bellator is a great organization too. I, I wouldn't mind possibly signing with them at some point. But I mean, the goal is to perform and be able to perform on the highest of stages. And the UFC and Bellator, you know, those are the two biggest biggest in the world right now. Hmm, okay. What are your thoughts about PFL? Um, I've seen a little bit about it. It seems pretty exciting. Um, I haven't watched too many events. I've been hearing a lot about it, though. So, you know, I'm I'm always open to fight anywhere, really. Right now I'm just trying to fight as often as I can, build my resume, so, I mean, I wouldn't put, you know, anything anything out of realm of possibility. Hmm. So I'm going to try to separate you two because it's Pat Casey and Pat DeMoss on the line. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to refer to Pat D right now. Go ahead, Pat. All right. So I'm kind of curious. You've been training for, you know, like you said, a little under four years. What What is your style kind of like right now? What What martial art are you favoring right now in, in your training, in your fights? What, what's, what's your go-to? To be honest, if you've looked at my my fights, I, I've approached fights in various different ways. I, I feel I'm a pretty complete fighter. I didn't come in, like I said, I didn't come in with a certain background, so I wasn't coming in like with a wrestling mentality thinking I have to wrestle or a stand-up mentality thinking I have to always keep the fight on the feet. I've, I learned everything together. So I've had, like my first pro fight was pretty much all stand-up. It was pretty much a kickboxing match. My second pro fight, I took the guy down and held him down most of the time. The third fight, I had a submission in like 20 seconds. So I, I pride myself on being a pretty complete fighter, and I just try to react. Obviously, I go in there with certain game plans depending on who I'm fighting, but things happen in there, and you got to react, and you got to be comfortable in all assets, in all facets of the game. So I feel that's one of my strengths, being an overall fighter. Yeah, being that you are young, and especially young in the sport, um, there's other leagues as well, like you said, the ultimate goals of UFC. I'm curious, what's your thoughts on the PSL, um, if they, you know, would offer you a contract? Uh, I mean, I would definitely listen to, to any to any offers, anyone who can offer me um, good fights, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't put anything anything out of possibility. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we've had fighters, you know, um, from the PFL come, come on before um, for interviews, and they've talked about, Chasing that million dollar cash prize is kind of like you know a big thing because um, uh-huh. you know the MMA organization you know, obviously has that. So uh-huh. is, is money is money kind of a big thing for you in in the sport or is it just kind of legacy right now? Well, I mean, money I think is a big thing for everybody in anything they do. Um, of course, I want to get paid for what I do. Um, <laughs> but I feel I feel it's more important if you're pursuing being the best. If you get to the level where you're the best or one of the best in the world. You sh- you should get compensated for it. So I feel they go hand in hand together. You know, as I get better and fight in higher higher leagues, I would assume I'll be getting paid more. But absolutely, money is it's always it's always important. You know, I don't I don't want to risk my health in there for you know 
for nothing. So absolutely, mm-hmm. money's always important. Absolutely. And how long do you see yourself doing the sport? Is it just kind of, you know, you're just going to see what happens with your career, or is it, do you have, like, a long-term goal? It's it's definitely what I want to do for my career. You know, I definitely want to make a living off of fighting. I want to get to the highest levels of the sport. You know, the, the idea is always to get as high as you can and make as much as you can in the shortest time period and, you know, get out as healthy as you can. I don't – I mean, I can't put a time on it because I don't, I don't know how my body's going to respond or react. I mean, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon, you know, but I definitely want to be able to have success in it, enough success where I can, you know, provide for myself and my family a good life. And then when I get to that point, you know, you'll see where my desire still is and how my body is, and you know, that will be a decision I'll have to make hopefully years down the road. Okay. Absolutely. Now, where, where does the motivation and or inspiration, well, actually both, where does that come from within you to step into the cage and, you know, put it all on the line? Uh, you know, it, it's hard to explain. I, I just feel it's something that's in me, you know. I've always I've always loved, loved fighting. Even before I actually was a fighter, I was a huge fan of fighting. I've been a big Mike Tyson fan my whole life. I, uh, we, as we all. <laughs> yes, yeah, as everyone's. I was big into martial arts movies. And even before I was a fighter, I just, always envisioned myself getting into fighting at some point in my life. It's just it's just something I feel that's in me. You know, some people are born with certain skills and certain instincts. I just fighting was always something that was very natural to me. Like I don't have much experience but I've learned quickly. From the first day I stepped into a gym, you know, I was able to compete with guys that were, you know, pros for a very long time. So it's something that came comes natural to me and I definitely get extra motivation. I have a family. I have, I have a kid, you know. That definitely always motivates me to, you know, do well and do well for them. But, I mean, even outside of that, it's just something I truly, truly love to do, you know. And it's, you know, just something I, it could be a career where I can make money and enjoy it, but it's also something I enjoy waking up and doing every day. So it doesn't even really feel like work to me, to be honest. So you just like getting up, getting up and beating on people. I guess. I don't know what about me, but, you know, it's it's a little, you know, if you do it in the cage and you do well, they cheer for you, they applaud you, you know, if you do it outside, you're going to jail. So I, I, I think I find, I found a, you know, good place to do it in. One thing you mentioned, um, uh, you fight with your family in regards to that. See, you, you have two daughters and one daughter. I have uh, one daughter, but I also have a niece who I have custody of. So basically, okay. I have yeah. two kids that live with me. Yeah, <laughs> me yeah and, and that's me. that's beautiful. You know, you're raising two kids, you, you, you and your partner. And um, so in a sense, like you said, when you fight your family, you fight for them as well when you step into that cage. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. You know, the kids the kids don't go to the fights yet. They're young, I was going to be the next question. Yeah, I, don't, you know, I get asked that a lot. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if they're ready. I mean, I'll show them after on YouTube or something or video, but I don't know how they would react being there. But my, my, my girl is always, always there, always supportive. Most of my family goes. The only people that don't go are the kids. My mother and my grandmother don't go either. They don't hmm. they, they don't like to see me fight for whatever. They went to all my football games. I tell them football is just as dangerous, but, you know, it's, I think it's just a weird thing for them to see me fight. But everyone else in my family loves it. They go. They don't miss a fight ever. Okay. Now, actually, I have a question. Um, this has to do with regards to coaching. How was mm-hmm. the transition going from such a team sport like football to where you have multiple coaches, strength conditioning, you know, offensive defense and coordinator, all that kind of stuff? How did you transition from that? to being a one-off athlete, being, you know, an individual sport? I I love it, actually. You know, I, I love the pressure being solely on me. You know, I love having, you know, f- football is an ultimate team sport. You know, everyone has to do their job for you to do well in football. And, you know, I like the, I like the team aspect, but I like winning or losing being solely on me. You know, at the end of the day, I can look in the mirror and say, if I was successful or if I was unsuccessful, it was on me. It was on my preparation. It was how I performed in that cage. So I like I like getting all the credit, and I, I enjoy the pressure of the blame being on solely me if things don't go, you know, go the way they're supposed to. That's understandable. 
And so you're, you've been fighting, you know, mostly regional right now. Is there, do you have any plans in the future? Um, I'm sure you would, you know, if you're offered to fight nationally or even internationally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. You know, I'm always looking to – I'm open to fight anywhere. I'll fight here, another country, another planet if it was allowed. I mean, I'm just trying, <laughs> trying to fight and get my name out there as much as I can. Um, you know, for na- right now I've been mainly out in the northeast, you know, northeast region. But, you know, as I keep winning and keep moving up, you know, there's only so many so many people in the Northeast you can beat up until you're going to have to go somewhere else. So <laughs> eventually it's going to happen. All right. Very, yeah, very interesting. You know, like um, very inter- very interesting career that you, you know, you have in front of yourself and, you know, things that you're, you know, doing and getting ready to, you know, do. Um, last but not least, tell us more, if you can, tell us a little bit more about your upcoming fight on the 12th. Like, do you know your opponent? Do you know what um, kind of style he, you know, he brings in the ring or anything? Yeah, my opponent, I, I don't want, I don't want to say his name because I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, so I don't want to butcher his name, but <laughs> he's, he's, out, he's out of Connecticut. He's a two and one pro, um, heavy handed guy, got a couple knockouts, also been knocked out once himself, you know, swings hard. You know, I think he's a, he's definitely a tough tough opponent but I, I don't I don't think he he's on the level of me as an overall fighter, you know. I think he I think he's talented. I think he he comes to bang but there's a million guys in the MMA world who are tough and hit hard. So you need more than that to deal with me. So you know, I'll I'll be prepared for him. I'll be prepared prepared for what he's gonna bring. I'll respect him like I do all my opponents. But at the end I'm going to leave with my hand raised like usual. Mm. Pat D, you have any more questions? No, nah, I think that about, about <laughs> excuse me, about does it what I have to ask. Okay. Uh, Pat C, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if a person, how you say, wanted to know exactly who Pat Casey is as a fighter, how would you describe yourself? Uh, like I said, I'm, pretty well well rounded. I'm definitely an explosive fighter, you know. Whether I'm throwing hands or, you know, getting takedowns, I I I move quickly. I, move, I do things in an explosive manner. Um I pressure, I come forward a lot. You know, I'm I'm definitely willing to take I'm willing to take the fight wherever it has to be and I don't go into a fight saying I have to do this game plan or have to do that game plan. I, I react to what my opponent does. When I see, you know, see an opening, I try to be as explosive and you know, deadly as I can in the moments. And hey, for continued support, where can people follow you at? Um, like, you on know, Instagram, media, like uh, Pat Casey ten thirty five, or Facebook Pat Casey. Um, that's where I usually, you know, keep everyone up to date on what's going on in my fights and my career. You know, I'll post videos, post things about tickets and all that good stuff. <laughs> You sound so reserved right now. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm a generally relaxed guy, you know. People, I also work in a school. I work in oh, a school okay. with special ed students. So wow, find, that's something interesting. Find, yeah, they find it strange. So, like I'm very calm during the day, and I say, you know, when you get to you know punch people in the face for two, three hours <laughs> a day, you're pretty calm in general life. You know, I, I let it all out at night, and then my uh, my normal. My normal demeanor is usually pretty calm, unless it unless it needs to be otherwise. That's pretty interesting that you you know you like to you know beat people up, <laughs> you like to go in the cage and kick ass, and but outside of that, you work um, in a school with uh, special ed kids. I don't mean to say it like that, but you know special education yeah, yeah. kids with needs and things like that. That's really that's really great, man. That's really great. Yeah, it's a, you, so it's like you know you're rewarded on both sides of the spectrum. Yes, yes. People always find that very interesting about me, you know. And sometimes at work, I tell when I tell when people find out I fight, they're often surprised. I mean, if they don't already know me, they're often surprised that I, you know, they find it such a, you know, people could be more, you know, people are very, very in- diverse, interesting creatures. You know, I can be one thing in the morning, and I can be something completely different at night. I hear that. I hear that. Well, Pat, we appreciate you coming on, and uh, we're yes, definitely, very much so. you know, we're definitely going to have you back on as soon as we can. You know, you know, got to let you get your training. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, after that tra- fight, well, uh, yeah, we'll have to swing you back on the show. Talk about yeah, your. Yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah, do a post fight interview. How's that? Absolutely. That sounds good. All right. Well, thanks again, Pat. We appreciate you, man. Good luck. Yeah, thanks yes, a lot. Good thanks luck to you. Thanks All right. Have a good one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, X, my co-host, my beautiful co-host. <laughs> I am handsome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. You're pretty lucky next Thursday. You know that you uh, you may have the chance to attend a press conference between uh, possibly the greatest fight in UFC history, or the largest fight at least. Uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor will take place, like I said, a press press conference next Thursday at Radio City Music Hall in New York. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I know it's going to be jam packed. I know it's going to mm-hmm. be hectic. I know it's going to be crazy because Conor McGregor is going to be in the building. And like you said, Khabib, the undefeated fighter, and the history, the bad blood, and the history that's already going on with them two guys. O M G! I'm just hoping that Conor doesn't throw nothing while I'm there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously this press conference is huge because there hasn't been a lot of animosity building up to this fight. Social media conflicts have been minimal, and you know, interaction between the two men overall have been kind of low um, compared to a lot of other McGregor buildups. In the past, however, uh, I think it's going to really lead up for a huge press conference. And you know, th- those who don't know Khabib, he, I mean, he's so popular in Europe. He's so popular. I mean, look at his following on Instagram. I mean, he is, I mean, I think I know he's over a million followers. I believe uh, he's very popular Sheesh. in Europe. Um, he's a very popular fighter overall. And this fight is is going to be huge, and it's going to do a lot of pay per views. You have Conor McGregor. I mean, who obviously I think dominates the U.S. in pay per views as well. But obviously, you know, he's got he's got Ireland. He's got he's got a lot of Europe. Then you have Khabib. He's tapping into the Russian market and a lot of these other markets. Even fans in the U.S., Canada. Um, this fight's going to sell like crazy, and I think that's why we haven't seen a whole lot of build up because you know Dana White and the UFC brass know that this fight's going to do well on its own. But like I said, this press conference is great to have, um, especially for his fans, countries to something. But moving on from that, this weekend we have. UFC Fight Night 136, heavy hitters, Mark Hunt and the boa constrictor, Alicia Olenek, will fight off in the heavyweight mid event. Uh, this is a great fight because, you know, Mark Hunt's on the tail end of his career. Alicia Olenek, um, the guy's 56 and 11 and 1. Okay, I mean, this guy is super experienced. So, but I, I feel like he still has, he could, um, you know, he could, he could bump up. In the rankings a bit, uh, depending where Olenek wants to go after this fight, but it's a critical fight for both guys. Uh, very pivotal in the career. Um, at light heavyweight, we have Yan Blakowicz taking on Nikola Krylov, Krylov excuse me. Um, Andre Olovsky on that card as well, taking on Sh- uh, Shamil Abadur-Kamenov, I believe is how you say his name. I am sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this is a good card. A lot of heavyweight fights, like I said. Um, a lot of big boys going to be in the cage that night. Overall, a uh, pretty decent card, some fan favorites, so look forward to that. Finally, moving on from that, we have PFL dates to talk about really quick. October 5th, 2018, we have our first round of playoffs in the PFL. New Orleans, Louisiana. I've been there one time, and uh, interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely an interesting area. Um, PFL 9 takes place in Long Beach, California, and October 20th, in Washington, D.C., and then uh, just to kind of jump ahead, way ahead in the future, the finale will be December 31st in New York City, New York. So there's the PFL Schedule X. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we're both pretty pretty good fans of the PFL. Do you, do you like this, uh, this setup where they're doing the locations at? Absolutely. Like you just mentioned, you know, New Orleans is a fantastic it's a fantastic city. There's a lot of fun that you can get into outside of the cage. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um but I'm definitely I'm definitely loving what PFL is doing with regards to their playoff system and, you know, having the guys fight two fighters on the same night, same card back to back. It's 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 like what can you ask for? You don't you you, you get the unexpected. You don't know what's going to take place on fight night with, with some of the guys who are leading in the rankings in the division. So it's, it's definitely something to pay attention to. It's, a, it's new. 
some new ideas, bring something different to the sport of um, MMA and mixed mixed martial. I mean, combat sports and things of that nature. So I can't wait. You know, I'm I'm re- truly excited for the fighters who who are looking to put on a phenomenal show in hopes of you know get, getting to the to the title to win the million dollars. Because I don't think a lot of these guys really care about the, the title. They just want that million dollars. Just like any one yeah. of us, so <laughs> I'm, I, I can't wait to see that. But the, but the, you know, to backtrack a little bit with regards to the UFC, um, you did, you mentioned Mark Hunt, and you mentioned Andre what was it, Adlowski. I hope I didn't yes. butcher his name or mispronounce it. That guy, Andre, I used to watch a lot of his fights when he was really a terror in um in the UFC. So to see him right now still doing what he does, it's impressive. It's still amazing. And I'm also shocked to see that Mark Hunt is also fighting, given the fact of all the things he's said about Dana White in the past and, you know, regarding steroid use and, and threatening to sue. So it's it's kind of surprising. It's, well, him not having steroid use, but it's the um, opponent that he faced um, had got caught busting steroids. So it's pretty, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty surprising to see Mark Hunt... Back in the hunt, per se. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like you said, you know, they had a lot of animosity before, a lot of tension. Um, hopefully, Mark Hunt fin- finishes out his long career in the UFC, but time will tell. Other than that, that does it uh, for MMA in the near future. We also have Belter we'll talk about next week. Um, but, yeah, other than that, that's kind of the news right now. We're just kind of waiting it out pretty much as five entries. UC 229, Conor McGregor versus Kuby, and move it off. Other than that, that is it for MMA, and that does it for my end of the sport. Well, before we go from MMA, I just wanted to pull you, pull you, hip your coat to something. Okay. Um, Mark Taffet, have you heard of him? What's his name? Mark Taffet. He has a new, um, he has a new MMA f- uh, venture taking place this this weekend in Atlantic City. It's um, the MMA Pro League, actually, and it's going to be featuring. Um, it's going to be featuring some fighters uh, with their head coaches who are very, you know, well-known within the, um, within the um, world of MMA mixed martial arts. That will be Dan Miller, and that will also be, uh, not Royce Gracie, but um, Daniel Gracie, excuse me. So I just want to, you know, make sure you're tuned in to Flow Combat, September 15th. Yeah, this Flow Combat, wow. Yeah, it's taking place in Atlantic City. So, you know, y'all should, if you if you can, if you're having a good opportunity, log on, not sure if it's a paid website, not sure if you got to pay, so I'm going to double-check my info on that. But it should be a pretty good fight card this weekend, um, taking place in Atlantic City with um, MMA Pro League. But back to boxing, you know, because that's what I'm here for, and that's what I love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week I had the privilege, the honor of attending Sean Porter and Danny Garcia. Uh what WBC Lucky was, you. yeah, it was it was pretty, it was pretty eventful. You know, it was a pretty eventful fight. Great fight. Um, it was you know it was hard to call for me. You know, I was sitting there watching it live, and I actually called it a draw. You know, um, wasn't shocked to hear that Sean Porter won. I wouldn't have been shocked to hear if Danny Garcia won because it was so such a close fight to me. Um, but I did see the difference in style of both fighters. I saw that Sean Porter showed everyone that yes, he can box. By coming out, leading with his jab, and um, and you know, moving with his feet very well, kind of kept Danny Garcia on his toes, and 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 definitely was able to counter the counter puncher in a sense. You know, he he basically owned he owned the ring. He was the ring general. And usually, when a fighter wins a fight, so so um, when he wins a fight, clear cut on all the judges' scorecards. That's because he he that's because he controlled the ring, ring generalship. So. So in a sense, you know, you got to give Sean Porter a hell of a, credit, a lot of credit for, you know, for what he did. Great fight, Danny Garcia. I think he 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 learned from this fight, but he'll definitely be back, you know. So I'm impressed by both men. But this Saturday, okay. I haven't I haven't even. I mean, this, this fight, man, it lost a little lust for me, luster, I should say. And I'm talking about the Saul Canelo Alvarez rematch fight with a uh, Triple G Gennady Golovkin. Um, but as we get close to the yeah, beautiful fight. <laughs> you know, like, like I said, you know, the first fight was it was beyond, beyond crazy. Now the second fight, I got a little. Like I said, I gotta say it lost a lot of luster for me when Canelo tested positive for the for the um um Caleno Caleno salt. Yeah, that's the bad. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> and. 
but now as the fight is up, almost upon us, and I see how much you know all the fight fans are, you know, they're in Vegas, and you know the Mexican fans are going to be out there. It's, it's going to be a fantastic match, and I'm eager to see how this match, how this fight will play out. What are your thoughts on it? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, like I said, I do watch boxing. Uh, big, big fights do draw my attention to be a very hardcore fan, and this is one of those matchups. Uh, like I said last week, I believe, was it last week you talked about this or the week before? Probably. We talk about it all the time. Yeah, we, we talk about this fight all the time, right? And if you guys don't already, I, I'm, uh, in my opinion, GGG won the last fight. That's just, you know, from my point of view. Um, and, and I'm very excited for this fight because Canelo, Canelo can win this fight, but in my eyes, it's just, <laughs> there's, there's more, I don't know how to word this. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult for Canelo to pull off the win to what he has to change mm-hmm. than what Canelo had to change to clearly win the fight. I feel like Canelo really didn't have to do a whole lot more to be convincing in my eyes. Like you mm-hmm. said, he was headhunting a lot, didn't really mix in combinations too well. Um, he does little things like that. I think he'll be fine. You know, he, he's a very powerful guy. Um, and Canelo certainly felt that. And that's definitely not going to change over the course of how many, how long mm-hmm. it's been since the last fight. Um, every time I see these rematches, um, this quickly, I think it's historic in pretty much any combat sport. I, I feel like the guy, you know, that won the first time wins, but again, you know, we had that draw, but in yeah. my eyes, GGG won the fight. Um, so I'm going to stick with my guns here and go with GGG just for the fact that like I said, like, you know, the, every, anytime I've seen rematches, immediate rematches this close in the time frame, um, usually the guy that. I, at least in my eyes, one um, usually picks up the win in the next fight. You know, look at John Jones even and Daniel Cormier, how far apart that was. And mm-hmm. So John Jones won. You know, MMA, it's all over the place and as well in boxing. But what are your thoughts on this fight? Um, I feel like we may differ a bit on who wins, but I kind of want to hear hear what your side of the story here. Mm-hmm. I'm a little, <laughs> um, you know, I'm on the fence with this because just like with the Sean Porter and Danny Garcia fight, it was it was just, well, like, well I'll, take, I'll say it like this. I actually, you know, like everybody else, I watched the fight, the first going round, Triple G against Canelo. Um, I happened to watch it in a bar with a million people in one in attendance watching the fight. And first fight going round, I thought Triple G won the fight. I think he there were some things he could have did differently, but to me, I felt like he won the fight at least at least seven to five. But they gave him a draw. Yeah, Triple G. Okay. Now, okay. Go, yep. now, now going into this fight, I I do understand what you mean because I did see a lot of things that Canelo did very well in the last fight and I do believe that he's going to do it again I just don't know if he'll be able to uphold and, and, and take his take the power that Triple G is going to bring back into this fight I think Triple G yeah. is going to do a, a better a better he's going to he's going to use a different type of strategy where I think he's going to really cut off the ring more this time. I think he gave up too much respect to Canelo last time. He let Canelo kind of, you know, get in certain places where he was effective in his in his in his offense and landed his his punches and certain angles and and things like that. I think this time around, I think Canelo's going to try to box his best. He's going to try to move, but the problem is Canelo Canelo is a dancer who didn't finish, who didn't go all the way <laughs> in a sense. Like he went to dance school. But he didn't go through all the way to get to the top, and right now he's finding a guy that's that's like, listen, we're gonna dance, but we're not gonna dance at all. We're not gonna ballroom dance. We're gonna dance face to face, and and you know, so right now, can, in order for Canelo to win, he has to play. He has to have the perfect fight. This is the bullet gets the matador. He has to be the best Canelo that he's ever been in his life, and I'm not too sure he's gonna be able to do that. So I'm going to go with Triple G also. I wouldn't be surprised if if Canelo pulled off the upset, given the fact that Triple G is kind of up there in age. And I, I saw a slight decline in his, in his, in his um, reflexes in the last fight. So I wouldn't be surprised. But, hey, it's going to be a hell of a fight this weekend. Absolutely. Canelo Alvarez, win, lose, or draw, is going to put up a hell of a fight. Uh, he's an absolute warrior. So, I, like I said, I don't, I don't doubt, don't doubt that man's heart. The least bit, I just, like I said, I think GG is just too big. He's too, too, too strong for for Canelo. It just seems like, it seems like you know, his punches every time he connected, it just seemed to, you know, Canelo felt it, right? And if Canelo is comfortable with eating Canelo, or if GGG is comfortable with eating Canelo's shots, I think, like you said, this time he's going to cut off the angles, kind of march him down a little bit more kind of loosen up some of that respect he may have given him up in the first fight. 
Yeah, I agree. And and just to run back before we go, I just wanted to talk about, just wanted to go right back to Sean Porter and the Danny Garcia fight because there's a lot of variables that took place in that fight and a lot of things that's taken place after. And I want people to understand out there that regardless of whoever won the fight, you know, both men deserve a lot of credit for putting on a fantastic show, giving us the one, the best of each other. But you also got to look at what's coming after because right now you got to look at the welterweight division because it is, once again, one of the hottest divisions in boxing. So it's like it's like Game of Thrones in a sense, because now you have Sean Porter, the WBC champ, Keith Thurman, who was at the fight, who was the WBA champ, who fought Sean Porter and Danny Garcia and picked Sean Porter to win by decision. You also had Errol Spencer there, the IBF welterweight champ. So that's four, that's four champions right there. Excuse me, because Danny Garcia was also a former champ. And Andre Berta was there. He's also a former champ. He's also the former WBC champ. So you got to look at it. Errol Spence has the IBF. Um, Sean Porter has the WBC. Keith Thurman has the WBA. Terrence Crawford has the WBO. That's four kings in the welterweight division right there. But let's not forget Manny Pacquiao. Let's not forget Manny Pacquiao because he also has a version of the WBA welterweight belt. Keith Thurman has the super, Manny has the regular. I get confused all the time about that, but either way, he's still a viable contender in that division. So the welterweight division is definitely hot. It's going to get even hotter in a few months. Stick around. You're going to see a lot of things taking place within boxing and also within the world of mixed martial arts. Any last words, Pat? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, real quick, just want to touch on um, next week, I definitely will be touching on BJJ a little bit more. About a lost connection. Hello? I can hear you now. What are what you doing? You, you fighting in the cage? You came back out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess, uh, I don't know, someone didn't want to talk. Need to talk about BJJ. I don't know what happened there. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, BJJ, we will touch on it more next week. Hopefully some information is released about Kevin Lee and possibly Dylan Danis. Other than that, that does it for me. Uh, but, yeah, another great episode underneath the books. All right. See you all next week. Same time, same, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> We're going to try to get on another special guest for us, uh, for y'all next week. Hopefully we get somebody from um, the world of uh, mixed martial arts again because I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting excited each and every time I speak to a guy that likes to go in a cage or a woman who likes to go in a cage. And if, we, and if we're unsuccessful in getting a guest to come on, we are going to welcome God, you, you all to call in. So stay tuned, stay locked. Shoot the five. See y'all next week.